All right, let's go. The Battle for the Beacon. Quest card one, Battle for the Hill. We're going to set the Host of Rohan aside out of play. We're going to add the Aralas Beacon and one per player in range Dunlandings. That's easy to say. To the staging area. Then we're going to add the double-sided quest to the staging area. Reclaim the beacon side face up. And then we're going to add a surrounding grassland as the active location. Side 1B, 12 quest points forced. After placing any amount of progress on this stage, each player must choose either exhaust a character you control or deal one damage to Aralas Beacon. We cannot complete the stage while the Dunland Lendings, I'm never going to get that right, control the beacon. All right, the Aralas Beacon. It is an objective in the staging area forced at the end of the combat phase. Deal one damage to Aralas Beacon for each enemy in the staging area. Aralas Beacon has X hit points, where X is equal to 2 plus 3 per player. If Aralas Beacon ever has damage equal to its hit points, we lose the game. The double-sided quest card in the staging area. Reclaim the beacon side face up. The Dunlendings control the beacon. Enemies in the staging area cannot be optionally engaged or take damage. Cannot have more than X progress on it, where X is... 2 plus 1 per player, so 3 in my, my case. If Reclaim the Beacon has 3 progress on it, we're going to flip it over, keeping all progress. All right, let's take a look at this enemy in the staging area. The Enraged Dunlending is a 30 engagement, 2, 3, 1, 3, forced. After he engages you, you got to deal 1 damage to the Beacon. Well, that's not good. All right, let's set the host of Rohan out of play. Here's our active location. It's the surrounding grassland, 3 threat, 2 progress, archery 1, planes, force, after surrounding grasslands is explored, if there is not another copy of surrounding grasslands in play, we need to add this to the staging area. Lots of grass in Rohan. No, not that kind of grass. Okay, the deck I'm bringing is one suggested to me by C-Stan that Shellen used during playtesting, so we'll be using Leadership Denethor, 8 Threat, 1133, three. Gondor Noble Steward, Add two resources to his resource pool at the start of the game, and then I can move a resource from his resource pool to a Gondor hero's resource pool. And maybe that hero is Boromir. 11 threat, 1, 3, 2, 5, Gondor warrior noble. While Boromir has at least one resource in his resource pool, Gondor allies get plus one attack. And then the third hero, it's a new one. It came with this deluxe. It is Ingold. He is... A 10 threat leadership hero, 3, 1, 2, 4, Gondor warrior response. After a Gondor or warrior ally enters play under your control, draw a card. Then I can either spend a resource from his resource pool or raise my threat by one. Okay, I noticed that only one of my heroes had the white sleeve in the background, so that was driving me nuts, so I swapped those out. Here's my custom tracker, 29 starting threat. Denethor starts with his two resources. Let's give this deck a shuffle. I did make a slight adjustment. I added Strength of Arms since I had three leadership heroes. It seemed crazy not to include that. And then I also added a couple Wardens of Healing. Seeing that archery on the active location made me think I might need some healing. I've only played this quest once, and it was about a year ago. So this is going to be pretty much blind playing this quest. I don't remember much except you're doing a lot of balancing. You're trying to keep a balance between the quest and then the objective. All right, let's take a look at this opening hand. There's an ally, the Soldier of Gondor. There's Visionary Leadership. That's awesome. Faramir, another ally. Got to spend four resources for that one. Steward and the Citadel Custodian. So that's an excellent opening hand. I got my two key attachments and I got some allies I'm going to be able to put into play. Let's give everybody their resources and draw my card. And it's Gandalf. Because Denethor can pass his resource around to either of these two heroes, I have a decision on what to do here. And I'm going to put Steward on Ingold, actually, because I'm going to be spending a lot of his resources when I play Gondor or Warrior allies. And also, I'm going to try to keep resources in everybody's resource pool. It really helps with some of the long extended party um, allies that came with this pack. So let's play that Soldier of Gondor, and then when you play him, you get to search your top five for a Gondor ally. But I also drew a card thanks to Ingold, and then I raised my threat per his response. Here are the top five cards of my deck. I think I will keep the Herald of Anorian because that is how I can get a Warden of Healing into play. All right, two resources for Visionary Leadership, so as long as Ingold has a resource in his resource pool, I will also be boosting my Gondor character's willpower. 
It also makes sense to put that on Boromir, but like I said, I'm going to try to keep resources in both characters' resource pool. All right, let's commit to the quest. Unfortunately, I'm not sending very much, so I am boosting my Gondor characters by one. So that is, oh man, that's only six. So I better send Boromir for eight, and I'm going to try to put three progress on the beacon quest. So I'm up against two, and we get a two-threat enemy, the Wild Ravager, and at the beginning of the encounter phase... He randomly engages a player. So obviously that's going to be me. So I only make four progress, which is a real shame because two goes on the active and two goes on the quest in the staging area, which is one short from flipping it. Okay, so the surrounding gr grasslands doesn't leave play. It goes right back into staging. So there's no reason not to travel there. So I will have archery one. I'm going to get engaged by both of these guys. He is going to make me deal a damage to the beacon, so let's place that damage. And then I'm just double checking all of my triggers. First time playing this quest in a year, so it's a lot to remember what triggers when if you haven't played it in a while. All right, so I got two attacks coming. That's not good. Denethor can handle one, but the other attack... I'm going to have to do a little trickery. So let's place the archery on that soldier, and then I'm going to play Morwen Steel Sheen. And she says she can be put into play from your hand, and then I have to discard a Rohan or Gondor ally I control. And then she has a response. After a Rohan or Gondor ally leaves play, you can exhaust her to either heal two damage on a character or reduce your threat by one. So that soldier of Gondor found her, so let's... Take him out of play and put her in. So now I have two characters to handle these two attacks. Okay, Steel Sheen will defend against the Wild Ravager and New Shadow. So that is very good. Thank you very much. And now Denethor will take the Enraged Dunling on and No Shadow. So he takes no damage. I have nobody ready to attack back. So we just go into the next round. Ingold's going to be getting two extra resources from the steward of Gondor. So there we go, getting lots of leadership resources. Now I do remember at this point that Ingold is limit once per phase, not per round. So he could have drawn me a card when Morwen entered play. So I did that and raised my threat. And then here's the card I would have drawn at the start of the turn. It's a Ramus Sentry and he has the devoted keyword. So as long as my heroes share a trait with him, I can put him into play without the sphere match. And he says, as long as all my heroes have a resource in their resource pool, he can cancel a point of damage just dealt to a Gondor character. So I have a lot to do. I want to make one progress, and I also have these two attacks at least to deal with. So let's play the Knight of the White Tower, this big guy here. And he is going to need all his resources paid for by a single hero's resource pool. So uh, Ingold's going to pay for him, and then since he's a Gondor and a warrior... I'm going to draw a card, so I did that, and I raised my threat for that one. With my final two leadership resources, I'm going to put in the Herald of Anorian, and then he can do a Doom 2 and put in another ally that costs two. I was saving him so I could put in a Warden of Healing, but I need to get more bodies on the table. So that Ramus Sentry will be coming into play as well. So I was able to put three allies into play, which is going to be very helpful. All right, let's try to put a progress on this beacon quest so we can reclaim it. Unfortunately, I don't have any resources, so no one's getting a willpower boost. So I will be sending six against nothing, and I need to make three progress, basically. And we get a treachery from all sides. Each player must choose either deal one damage to four different characters I control, or I deal a damage to the beacon. I think I can take the damage, so let's do that. And I'm really feeling like adding this Warden of Healing was a good call. I just got to get it into play. All right, so let's deal out some damage, and the good news is, is I'm going to make the progress needed to flip the quest in the staging area. So here comes the damage. Lots of hit points on that Knight of the White Tower, so he's excellent. And uh, yeah, so I cleared the grasslands. They go back into staging, and now we get to claim the beacon. So here we go. Uh, now we have to defend it. Uh, shadow cards are immune to player card effects. It cannot have more than X progress, where X is equal to 2 plus the number of players, so 3. In response, remove any amount of progress from Defend the Beacon to cancel an equal amount of damage just dealt to the beacon. If Defend the Beacon ever has zero progress, we flip it back over, so the Dunlendings got it back. Okay, so the 3 progress carry over from the other side. Let's travel to the grassland. We got a little bit of archery to deal with. 
and we got some combat. I'm really glad I didn't reveal a third enemy. That would have been pretty bad news. Okay, so I take the damage there, and then, yeah, let's try to defend this. Denethor will go three against three. No shadow, thank you very much. And then I think my Knight of the White Tower... Nah, Boromir. Boromir will defend, and... Ooh, same card. Okay, I don't like that location, so I'm glad those were shadow cards. Okay, so I can swing back. He's attacking for two. And then I forgot that the Knight of the White Tower is actually still ready. So I remember in a minute and add his attack power as well. And let's kill that guy. So, excellent. I'm glad I, I noticed he wasn't exhausted. All right, so now we'll go into the next round. The card I draw is another Herald of Anorian. And I think this is a good time to play the White Tower Watchman. So if each hero you control belongs to the same sphere of influence, damage from an undefended attack can be assigned to him instead of the hero. So that's great. I'll trigger Ingold's effect by raising my threat. And I drew a card, and I drew the Citadel Custodian, who costs nothing if you have five... Gondor allies in play. He gets minus one to his cost for each Gondor ally in play. And that's table-wide. That's not just your play area. That's anybody's play area. Really good target for a very good tail. All right, time to commit to the quest. I have a resource in Boromir and Ingold's resource pool. Let's send the Citadel Custodians for two, thanks to Visionary Leadership. And Ingold for four. The Herald of Anorian for two more. I'm going to be questing against the main quest, so I want to try to put as much progress as possible because I'm going to have to exhaust a character if I place any progress on that quest. I don't quite think I'm going to be able to do it. I might get lucky, but I need to have a character ready to exhaust. So I'm going to send 15, and I need to make 12, and there's two progress on the active location. And yeah, okay, we get a two-threat enemy. So I'm going to be just short, but I, I actually... I'm okay with that. I think another round of letting me put uh, some more allies in play is actually good. So let's put 11. I travel back to the surrounding grasslands and I engage that in range, Dunlending, and then I remember I was supposed to either exhaust somebody or deal a damage. I think I'm going to deal the damage and then just use the defend the beacon effect to remove that damage I just placed. I take my point of archery, and then I remember the enraged Dunlinging should have also done a damage to the beacon. So, yeah, not doing stuff in the right order. I just, lots of triggers, and I haven't played this quest, like I said, in a year. So, it's a lot to remember the first time playing. Okay, let's defend. No shadow, thank you very much. I'd like to make sure I kill something this round. I don't know if that's going to be a possibility. It, it might be. So, I just got to figure out how I want to take this attack. Uh, the shadow is, if it's attacking from the staging area, it makes an additional attack. Okay, well that's scary because I didn't even know enemies could attack from the staging area. So let's swing back with my ready characters and we will kill that wild ravager and we will go into the next round. Alright, and then after I get my resources, including the resources from Steward of Gondor, we draw a veteran of Askiliath. Not really the card I wanted. I actually got rid of a couple copies of those to put the Wardens in. But, uh, yep, the Wardens are still hiding, so I wish I would have replaced all three with three Wardens, because that would have been a Warden then, right? This seems like a good time to play Gandalf, because I really don't know what happens if I advance to Stage 2. So having Gandalf in play seems like a smart move. I have, I have literally no idea what's going to happen at Stage 2. Alright, so Gandalf's going to draw me three cards. Uh, I get another Knight of the White Tower, a Ramas Sentry, and a Soldier of Gondor. So three more allies. So I have plenty of allies to play, but I'm going to try to keep those resources in my hero's resources pool so they get their boosts. And let's send on the quest... Uh, I mean, it seems like I only need to make three progress. Well, okay, I, I only need to make three progress. But I know there's a lot of threat. I know that one location can be five threat. So let's see what I get. Ooh, and it's a four threat enemy. Okay, definitely sent enough. So made a good call there. So the grasslands go back into staging. And we are going to advance to stage two. So let's see what that brings us. I do remember to exhaust a character. So good for me there, right? All right, let's take a look at this quest card. 2A, hold the hilltop. When revealed, place progress on defend the beacon, bypassing the active location until we have X, where X is three. And then we need to shuffle the encounter discard pile 
into the encounter deck, and then we're going to discard cards until an enemy is discarded and add it to the staging area. 2B, uh, no progress needed. Time 3, at the end of the round, deal 1 damage to Errorless Beacon, 2 damage instead if there are 3 or more players in the game. Then, if there are no time counters on this stage, we immediately advance to stage 3. Forced, after Defend the Beacon is chosen as the current quest, I have to reveal an encounter card, and if I ever let the Dunlendings control the beacon, I lose the game. Okay, so I gotta survive three turns, basically, at this stage. Okay, and let's see. So, shuffle the discard pile in, I added the progress on Defend the Beacon, and now I'm discarding cards, and we get the Recreant Rider? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Okay, with that enemy and the other one, I have a lot of work ahead of me here. So, the Recreant Rider, Rohan Trader, 3333, forced. When he enters the staging area, he's going to make an immediate attack against me. So, I have an immediate attack coming. This guy has Archery 2, he's a 4232. Two, two. And then, after he engages me, I have to exhaust the ready ally with the highest printed cost. So that stinks because I have some high cost allies and I have a lot of attacks coming. So I guess Gandalf will defend this attack here and it's either discard all resources from each hero or deal a damage to Airless Beacon. Uh, I know dealing damage, I mean I really have to be careful about it. So I think, yeah, I, I was going to remove a progress but I'm just going to get rid of all my resources. Okay, so I handled that attack. Now I have to exhaust uh, my highest cost ally, so I will choose Morwen. And yeah, three big attacks coming and archery. I remember to do the archery at the end of the combat phase. I'm just going to put it on Gandalf. All right, Denethor can defend this attack, and its attacking enemy cannot take damage until the end of the round. He has a protection spell or something. Okay, Knight of the White Tower against the enraged Dunlending. That shadow does nothing because he's not in the staging area, so I don't take any damage, and I have one more attack coming. And then Boromir is going to defend this attack, and no shadow there. So I think I handled all these attacks, but I don't really have anybody ready, except for this uh, Ramus sentry guy. He can attack for two, so I'll do one damage, and now I gotta backtrack a little bit. All those attacks coming from the staging area and, and the when engaged effects... I forgot to do some stuff in the round that I should have. So I should have traveled, and I, there was no reason not to, so I should have traveled, and I should have placed three archery. So that will go on Gandalf. And then I also never put the time counters down, so it should have been time three, now it's time two. And then here at the end of the round, I need to deal a damage to the beacon. So I think I'll remove a progress instead of placing a damage on the beacon. Sorry for not playing that in the correct order. Okay, let's go to the next round. I think I have done all the triggers and everything I was supposed to now. All right, everybody got their resources. Let's see what card I draw. And it's a very good tale. Of course it is. Okay, let's play this Soldier of Gondor for two. I'm going to spend Ingold's resources. And now I get to search my top five for... All the Gondor allies, because I have 40 threats, so that means any Gondor allies I find, I get to keep. So there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. That was great. Okay. So I got four. Wow. Okay. So let's uh, give the deck a shuffle after putting that a very good tail back on the top of the deck. And now what to do? I have a very good tail in hand, so I think I will play that. I'm going to exhaust both of my Citadel Custodians. And we will do a very good tale. Give the deck a quick shuffle, even though I really didn't need to since I just shuffled. And alright, I'm going to look at top five cards. I have ten resources worth of allies that I can potentially get into play. There's a Strength of Arms. There's Gandalf. That's awesome. Ancestral Armor. Ooh, another big Knight of the White Tower. Yeah, I think uh, these nine resources worth of allies are going to come in. So let's get another big boy on the table. And Gandalf, he's going to drop my threat right back down to 35. So... That's pretty good. And then I'm going to raise it by one per Ingold's effect because a Gondor and Warrior entered play and I draw the Rama Sentry. Okay, well right now all of my heroes have a resource. So <laughs> I decide not to spend anything, but I could have put that Citadel Custodian into play. I was just in my mind thinking I don't want to spend a resource. So I thought that means I can't put anything into play, but I could have. 
Okay, so now that means my Ramus Sentry that's in play can cancel a point of damage just dealt to a Gondor character, I believe. Okay, let's commit to the quest. So everybody's getting plus one willpower because I have a resource in Ingold's resource pool. I don't need to make progress. I just need to be careful. So if I go against that quest, if I go against the Defend the Beacon, I have to reveal an additional encounter card. So I'm not going to. I'm not going to go against that. A treachery. Assault upon Erelos. I got to choose an enemy engaged with me and add it to the staging area. Okay. If I can't, something bad happens. But I definitely can add an enemy to the staging area. It's just which one? They're all terrible. I guess the one that'll deal a damage to the beacon? Because if I add the other one, it, when it engages me, I have to exhaust somebody. And the other one, when I add it to the staging area, it makes an attack? It, there really wasn't a good choice there. Okay, so one damage to the beacon from having this guy re-engage me. So I just removed a progress there. Now I got all these attacks coming, and I have archery again. The archery will go on Gandalf. I exhaust the White Tower Watchman to defend and then remember to place the archery. Okay, let's resolve some combat. So the White Tower Watchman defends. There's no shadow. Okay, that's great. And then Denethor will defend. And there's no shadow. That's awesome. And then I guess the Knight of the White Tower will defend over here. And once again, this enemy cannot take damage. That's two rounds in a row. He's been protected by his shadow. All right, so I'm attacking for three with that guy thanks to the resource in Boromir's resource pool. So that's three. And then here's three more. So that's enough to kill the Hillman. And then Gandalf by himself can kill the enraged Dunlending. So, um, okay, that worked. I could have dealt some damage to this guy if he wasn't protected, but yeah, that, that makes everything a lot better. All right, so I'm dealing the damage to the beacon, and I'm putting it directly on the beacon because I can't let the Dunlendings control that quest. If they do, I automatically lose. All right, I have lots of resources to spend. The card I draw is another White Tower Watchman. Okay, that's that's good. But, man, I really would like the Warden of Healing. All right, let's look at all these cards. Holy crap, do I have a lot. There's me realizing, oh, okay, that, that's a card I could have played last round. Whoops. So he goes in for free. And then let's play an Envoy of Pelagir. So she's basically only going to cost one once I figure out where I can even put her. The Gondor Swarm is in full effect. So there we go. She'll spend two resources to come into play, and then one goes back to any of my heroes. So I will give it to... Ingold. Let's trigger, yes, let's trigger Ingold's effect, and I finally draw the Warden of Healing. Ugh, thank goodness. Okay, so I spent a resource after drawing that. Now I'm going to play the Herald of Honorian, so he's going to cost two, and then I'm going to do Doom 2 and put the Warden of Healing into play. So that, that feels good. Now I have some repeatable healing on the board. So here comes the Warden after I paid two and raised my threat by two, and I'm going to be using him right now. So let's heal Boromir. No, let's heal Ingold and Denethor. There we go. Let's see. So I still have one resource in everybody's resource pool. So let's spend two more off of Ingold and then put one back for another Envoy Pelagir. So I'm leaving one resource in everybody's resource pool so my Ramus Sentry can trigger and I also like keeping two resources back for strength of arms. Okay, let's go against Defend the Beacon. So I have to reveal a card before I commit characters to the quest and holy cow, who is this guy? Uh, Alright, I'll worry about him later, but he's a four threat enemy. That's, that's terrible because the quest card said when you choose the Defend the Beacon to be the quest, you need to reveal a card. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that happens before actual questing. Okay, I just want to make two progress on this thing and we get the wooden barricade. It's just a one threat location, but if you leave it in the staging area, bad things happen. All right, so once again, I clear the surrounding grasslands. I do place the two progress. Let's go to the wooden barricade. So it says forced at the end of the combat phase, deal a damage to the beacon if it's in the staging area. So we don't want to do that. Now, who is this guy? It's like some random boss level enemy. Okay, he is a 4446 four, 
Uh, forced, after he engages you, I have to discard a random card from my hand and then discard any copies of it that I control. Oh man, that's that's dirty. That's not nice. Okay, and uh, he has a victory point, so if I kill him, he leaves the game forever, which is great, but whoo, baby. It's going to take 10 to kill him. Let's see what card he's grabbing from me here. The card I'm going to lose is that one, I guess. All right, it was the Veteran of Osgiliath. Okay, no big deal because I don't have any in play. And yeah, archery. So I got an archery point coming somewhere. Let's put it on one of these custodians. They have lots of hit points. And then two more attacks coming this round. So let's get attacked. A four and a three. Uh, I think the Envoy of Pelagir will defend against the four. Yeah. All right. So in the shadow is any damage dealt to the defending character by this attack is instead dealt to the beacon. How have I not noticed that was a shadow? That enemy has been in play almost the entire game, and I never looked at his shadow? Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would have... Hmm. Okay. I really should have realized that was a possibility. That's not good. So, basically, four damage has to be applied to the beacon. I can block one with that Ramus guy. So he's stopping one damage from coming through. Man, I wish I had two of those in play. So that means three damage has to go on the beacon. And I make a, a mistake there. I was thinking the Envoy had one defense. So from this point forward, the Aralas beacon should have one more damage on it because I can remove two progress to cancel two of it. But the Aralas beacon should have taken one damage. So there should be three on there. Ay ay ay. All right, Denethor will defend here. Three against three. Return attacking enemy to the staging area after this attack. Good lord, I just cannot kill this guy. All right, and so now since he's in the staging area, he's going to make an attack. So uh, the envoy will defend that one, I guess. And attacking enemy cannot take damage. Holy crap, this guy just won't die. Even if I could have attacked the staging area, uh, then he wouldn't let me. And what's funny is after I did that defense I realized geez Chad you could have lost the game there that that shadow like I immediately forgot about it <laughs> but then, oh well you know I I didn't uh I didn't die so I have enough attack to kill that chieftain uh guy so that's good because I think leaving him around would have been a bad idea so now we have to go to the end of the round and I believe I have to deal the damage to the beacon before the last time counter goes off, so that should be four out of five damage on the beacon. And now we're going to advance to the next stage. I have no idea what's about to happen. Okay, we have the last push. All right, we're removing all the progress from Defend the Beacon and flipping it over. We're putting the host of Rohan into play with us. That's nice. Okay, we're going to shuffle the encounter discard pile in, and then we're going to discard cards until we get an enemy and add that enemy to the staging area. Okay, so let's let the Dunlingnings control that beacon again, so they get a hold of that. You jerks! We get the host of Rohan. This guy is pretty awesome. A 3435 three, Sentinel. And I can spend two resources to ready it. Okay. And then uh, we gotta shuffle in the discard pile and discard cards until we get another enemy. So I already have one in staging. And let's see which enemy I'm going to add. Not an enemy. There we go. Oh. Okay, we get the. Deadly Defector. All right. That's one I haven't had to fight yet, I don't think. I've seen it as a shadow a couple times. Okay, 3B, no progress needed. Add two to the total threat in the staging area for each damage on the beacon. Forced, at the beginning of the combat phase, each engaged enemy makes an immediate attack. Forced, after a character leaves play, I deal a damage to the beacon. At the end of the round, if the Dunlendings control the beacon, we lose. If we control it, we win. Oh, I see. Okay, so it's a big fight. So I basically have to survive two rounds of attack within the same round. And I just added it should be eight threat from the beacon. So I should be up against 16. And if I don't place three progress on defend the beacon or uh, reclaim the beacon, I guess it's called right now, uh, I lose automatically. So I have to place three progress. Luckily, with a Gondor Swarm, that that's not going to be a problem. The hard part is, is I'm going to have to deal with all these attacks without 
having a character leave play, basically. <laughs> so I, I drew Sneak Attack, which is like the least helpful card right now, because I don't want a character to leave play. Okay, so I have a lot of options. Basically, I know I'm going to have four attacks I have to defend, at least. Possibly six. So I have to play smart, and I need to save two resources for strength of arms. I think the best play is just to get somebody really strong into play that most likely won't die. So let's get another one of those Knight of the White Towers into play. So I gotta spend all the resources off of one. Denethor is gonna kick a resource over to Ingold. Ingold's gonna draw me a card, it's a steward. And I'll just raise my threat to 40? Yeah. Okay, so I have four resources left. So that means I can play Strength of Arms still. And yeah, I, I, I'm going to have to just hope that this board state is good enough and I cannot have anybody leave play because I have to assume that the shadow effects and engaged effects and all that kind of stuff are going to make me remove progress from um, Defend the Beacon. So let's send enough on the quest. Everybody's got plus one willpower. I need to make three progress. Remember, I'm up against two more. I'm actually up against 16 because I should have had one more damage on the beacon. And that can only take one damage. If that beacon takes one more damage, I'm dead. So I will send 31 against 16. Going against Reclaim the Beacon. And oh, great. Okay, so it's a four threat Hillman. That's not what I wanted to see. I mean, I make enough progress, but... I did not want an enemy. I was really hoping it wasn't an enemy. I only revealed like one location this entire game. But I do get to place the, the three progress on Defend the Beacon. So that's good. So I basically have two progress to work with. All right, let's look at this guy. So this guy, when he engages me, he's going to make me exhaust an ally that has the highest cost. I only have one ally ready at this time. Uh, this guy, if he's in the staging area at the end of the combat phase, he's going to make an attack. Okay, hopefully he stays engaged with me. And then this guy has the, when he enters, the staging area effect. So those are my three enemies. All right, at the beginning of the combat phase, they're all attacking me. So I have my three heroes still ready. So let's deal out the shadow cards in the right order. There we go. So Denethor is going to take the attack coming from the deadly defector and the shadow is after this attack either discard the defending character or deal a damage to the beacon here we go okay so i shouldn't have done that i should have removed a progress from the quest so the quest is now down to two all right boromir will defend here and we get after this attack either discard the defending character or deal a damage to the beacon oh good lord okay so i am literally down to one hit point left on the beacon. If the beacon takes any more damage, I'm dead. I can't remove a progress from protect the beacon, and I can't take a damage on the beacon itself. So this is it. If I have to deal any damage to the beacon, I die. All right, I was able to defend all three of those attacks, and I'm going to get attacked again, but I will play strength of arms after um, archery, really. I should have done archery first. So archery would have triggered, and then an action window opens up for me to play strength of arms and I should only be readying my allies it looks like I took Ingold's off on accident but I make up for it by accidentally leaving the white tower watchman <laughs> uh, exhaustion token on so okay there's me remembering I should have triggered archery three so I just gotta place three archery somewhere and if I understand this correctly all I gotta do is survive these three attacks without removing a progress from the beacon or I should say without dealing a damage to the beacon I cannot the beacon can't take any damage if the beacon takes any damage I lose so this is uh it's gonna come down to luck I mean it's it's about as razor thin as I can get here I oh man I I'm nervous this this is not going to be good all right so the host of Rohan will defend here uh, any damage dealt to the defending character by this attack is instead dealt to the beacon Whew, okay, no damage dealt. Oh, that's huge. All right, I can spend two resources and pop the host of Rohan back up. It will defend again. And then <laughs> attacking enemy cannot take damage. This guy literally cannot die. It's the exact same enemy constantly getting protected 
And then no shadow, so no damage to the beacon. So I am going to end this game with one progress on protect the beacon or defend the beacon and four damage on the beacon itself. It does not get any closer than that. Just for the fun of it, I'm going to kill any enemies that I can. So I do dish some damage out just to get a little bit of revenge. But, oh my gosh, I... I think I won. I mean, I hope I don't have a mistake floating around here somewhere where I did a damage and missed it or something. I, I, I think I won. And even if I didn't, it was a great game. It was an absolutely great game, and I really enjoyed it. So uh, final thoughts of this quest is it's just a ton of fun. It is really, really good. But you need to bring a deck that I think has a lot of allies this would be a hard quest to play without a lot of allies because you have a lot of attacks you need to take and you have to pump out a lot of willpower. So solo, it seems like a swarm deck would be your best bet. And Ingold is the perfect fit for a Gondor deck, especially mono leadership. He gets you that card draw and his negative effect for drawing that card can easily be paid for with the Gondor swarm. So uh, it, it was really fun. I'm, I'm doubting if I should have put that visionary leadership on Ingold. It might have worked out a little better on Boromir just to try to keep one hero with one resource because I didn't use the Ramus sentry very much. I would have loved to have gotten at least two of those into play. That that would have been cool because uh, then that Envoy of Pelagir could have only had to take two damage from that one attack. So, yeah, but I... Oh, man great quest guys this is another really great quest i love the back and forth i love how you have lots of decisions to make about where you're questing against how you're going to handle the damage to the beacon and it's just a really well done quest so good job everybody can't wait to play this third quest i have no idea what i'm up against i see there's a new keyword vast that i have to worry about and i've heard it's really hard so we're going to be taking a new rohan deck up against the final quest in the first long extended party deluxe box so looking forward to getting that video out to you guys take care everybody thanks for watching Bye bye